Feminist Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings. I hope and trust I still find you well. We thank the Lord for leading us into another working week. As we begin, we want to delve on a devotional titled The Handover. This is a sequel from the one we did last Monday, which was titled Dealing with Rejection. I'll propose that you start there and then come and join us in about 10 minutes' time. Without much ado, come with me to the book of Deuteronomy. We are still at chapter 3 and we continue reading from verse number 28. It reads as follows. But commissioned Joshua and encourage and strengthen him, for he will cross over ahead of the people and enable them to inherit this land that you will see. And with verse 29, so we stayed in the valley facing Beth Pure. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we pause for a moment in prayer. Let us pray together, my friends. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for this word that you have given us, a word that is in season. In the various spaces of operation, there comes a time when we'll need to hand over. We pray, dear Lord, that you can give us clarity of mind on how to go about this and even how to keep the mission ever in focus. This has been our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask. Amen. My dear friends, allow me to raise just uh, five points as we start our working week. The first point I want to raise is an admonition. Do not abandon office. Hand over gracefully. Do not leave your office a bitter man, no matter how you have left it. Notice that as God speaks to Moses, he says, Moses, do not raise this matter with me ever again. You are not going to cross the River Jordan. You are not going to set foot on the promised land. But this is what I'm going to give you, consolation prize. Go up Mount Pisgah and view the land from the top. When you come down, this is now verse 28, commission Joshua to take over. This is Moses who has just been told, no ways, my friend. Don't even think about it. You are not going to get this. Bitter as he may have been, God then sends him on an errand. And he says, now that I have denied you to cross over, go and commission the one who is to cross over. And the Lord is simply saying, let this difference of opinion not affect our work. Let the way we ended not impede the realization of our mission. So Moses, go and commission Joshua. What is to commission Joshua? Go and charge him. Go and put him in position. Go and set him up for delivery. So Moses is now being told, go and hand over. You have been in charge for 40 years. Make time to hand over to your successor. Make time to equip your successor. Make time to set him up to succeed and even do more than you have done. This is what God is saying unto us. And I want to challenge you as I challenge myself. Are you setting up people who are going to do better than you have done when you are gone? Are you setting up people who are going to finish off the work when you are gone? Or oh, the work will end with you. The company is going to shut up after you are gone. Who is going to finish off the good work that you have begun? God is simply saying unto you and unto myself this morning, do not abandon office, but exit gracefully. Point number two, God even gives him specifics on what to say to Joshua. And number two, encourage the young man. You know, we have people who are discouraged. We have people who have no one to believe in them. God says, Moses, when you go there, be the young man's best and first supporter. Be the one to encourage him. Give him confidence that whatever he's going to do, the Lord shall be with him. Give him confidence and speak words of support. Support this young man, this incoming young man. Because the problem we have, especially, especially amongst us who are of uh, darker complexion, supporting one another is something that we, we have a hard time doing. Uh, allow me to, uh, to hit this arrow in your direction because I'm standing with you. I'm not on this side. For this one, I'm, I'm on the other side with you. Supporting others is something that we are yet to learn. And God says, whether you're in the office space, whether you're in the family space, 
Take time to support others. Encourage others. Even though they are not doing it the best way, do you have words of encouragement? Start there. God says, now you're going to be talking to your successor. When you get to your successors, your subordinates who are taking over some functions from yourself, take time to support them. Number three, do not only support the young man. Strengthen him. What does strengthening involve? It means give words of counsel and equip this incomer to excel. What are these words of counsel? You want to show him there are pitfalls in this direction. You want to show him when you are going about this particular task, there's a shorter way of doing it. Should you find yourself faced with this kind of a scenario, this is how I dealt with it in the past, so that they build on that and they do not have to reinvent the wheel. Whatever you have done before, let nobody have to rediscover it. Document what you have gone through. Let nobody have to rediscover it. Just detail it so they build on that and add an extra layer. You are there to set up the foundation. Let others set up the walls. If you have found the foundation and you've put the wall in place, let others work on the roofing. But do not be pulling out the bricks so that when they set up the roof, the walls is going to come crumbling down and everything is lost. There are some people who find it a joy to say, when I left, it has never worked. If it doesn't work after you are gone, you have failed to hand over. You have failed to strengthen those who are taking up from you. Let it at least remain where you left it. Then we know your successor did not improve it. But if it falls apart after you are gone, something is wrong with the equipment. You did not equip your successors. I want to challenge you. Let no successor fail because of the predecessor. Let no successor be frustrated because of the predecessor. Let no successor fail to contact a predecessor. And, and if you've done a good job, when you check out of the office, your successor should not be calling you and asking you about files. They should not be calling you and asking you about how things are done. Three months, three years, down the line, surely you do not do a handover. Do a proper handover. When all these things are done and done perfectly, we can only come to point number four. Point number four says, let us not lose sight of the greater mission. What is the mission? The mission is not to select leaders. It's not about Moses. It's not about Joshua. But the thing is, it's about the children of Israel entering the promised land. If we have the mission in mind and it is at the fore, right at the focus of our minds, we will always have this in mind. It's not about me. It's about what we are setting out to achieve. So when we have the mission at the fore of our minds, we are going to be sure all we need to do is to inherit the land, no matter who is at the helm. All we need to do is to deliver this, no matter who is in charge. With that kind of an attitude, all organizations are going to thrive. Competition shall not have any room because we are going to support and encourage each other. Lastly, point number five, as we wrap up, the Bible says, so we remained in the valley of Beth Pur. Some of us, we find ourselves in the valleys and God is keeping us in the valleys where it is cold. He's keeping us in the valleys where it is dark. He's keeping us in the valleys where there is no fresh air, most likely. God is keeping us in some of those situations that are less than ideal. Why? Because we need time to hand over. We need time to work out who is taking over. We need time to be reoriented towards the mission. While we remain in our valleys for this week, how I pray, the Lord is going to impress upon you and I to hand over gracefully. Should you be in that season and patch of your life, may these words be instructive. May the good Lord bless and prosper you. Until you meet again on Monday, blessings and peace.